everybody and welcome to Fab Tax. I'm Rosemary and in today's video I have some modern farmhouse outdoor decor made with Dollar Tree and upcycled materials. We have a couple of wall decor items and then a little something to light up your space. And then there's a little something for your some things. In addition, this is an extra special video because today I'm collabing with Holly from Hot Humble Pie. Holly is a fairly new YouTube crafter and if you have not yet seen her channel, you definitely want to go check it out. In addition to having new and unique content, beautiful DIYs, exceptional craftsmanship, and a fun and upbeat presentation style, she also shares some amazing techniques for crafting as well as for making DIY materials like beads and chalk paint. So you definitely will want to head on over to Holly's channel, which I will link in the description box below. But first, let's check out these DIYs. For the first DIY, I will be using this rain gauge from the Dollar Tree as well as this small chalkboard that I originally purchased at Walmart. It was in my stash, but I originally did get that one at Walmart. And then this remaining piece of a wall hanging, which I had originally purchased on clearance because the piece that went in the middle was busted through. And so I just removed that and uh, had this piece to work with. It's been sitting in my garage and today is its lucky day. So for this DIY, I wanted to use one of my very most favorite quotes. And this is actually on a plaque in my house, but I wanted to replicate it for this outdoor project. And it's that famous quote from Vivian Green that says, life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning to dance in the rain. And so now what I want to do is put that quote on this chalkboard. In order to do that, I went to my computer to write up the quote and then printed it out. I made it so that it was about the size that would fit well on this piece of chalkboard. And then I'm going to use the pencil method to just transfer this to the chalkboard. And I'll do that just by scribbling on the back of the piece of paper with a pencil. Now this worked really well. I did it last time with a piece of oil pastel, but I couldn't find it. So we'll have to revert back to the pencil. And you're saying, okay, how's that even going to ever show up? Surprisingly, it did. So you'll see um, in a second that it did leave a little kind of etched imprint. And I was able to see it in order to go back with the paint marker. Now, before I start tracing, I am going to just tape it in place so that it doesn't move around on me. Now I'll just begin tracing over the letters on this side of the paper. And again, that's going to leave an etched mark on the surface of the chalkboard that I'll be able to fill in with my paint marker. And I'll just continue that all the way down to the end. And then here we'll see when I untape it, you're like, I don't see anything. But here, if you look a little closer, there you can see it's kind of like an etching. It's hard for the camera to pick up, but it was there and it's um, it works out well. You can just go back. Now it does help to look at the original. So I did flip that back over to see the original lettering and um, it does work out pretty well. And you're able to see the pencil even on the dark chalkboard surface. And it's easy to just go back with the marker and um, fill in all of the lettering. Next, I went over to my rain gauge, and it's a really nice sized rain gauge. It's um, you know has these nice big letters on it, so it's really a cute looking little item on its own. But it does have this big plastic spike down there at the bottom, so it's not going to look too attractive on my wall hanging. So I did want to go back with some twine and just cover that up. So I started out with some of the hot glue. Uh, to secure the original piece and now I'm going back with some of this tight bond glue but you can use some tacky glue or just regular white glue would work fine here you could use the hot glue too it's just you know hot glue hates me so you know we, we try to keep our distance as much as possible but um, if you're comfortable with hot glue that will work just as well here and um, just you know, continue going down all the way around. I did add some hot glue in other spots where it was like this space here where the little tip is uh, that is hard to do with the tacky glue or the you know the glue that I was using there because you do need something that's going to stick right away uh, because that that space is a little bit hard to get you know it'll start to unravel if you use the other other glue but if you use the hot glue it'll sear that right together along with your fingers if you're me and then I went back to fill in that little gap uh, underneath of the rain gauge the rain gauge itself creates like a little ledge and so I need it to go back with some more twine. I just took pieces of twine and I cut them to kind of fit that space and then I just glued them in and it looked perfectly fine. That's what I love about this twine. It's so forgiving. You can just 
you know, stick it on in and it all looks good. Since I actually want to use this rain gauge for fresh flowers from time to time, I want to apply it to my little, I don't know what you call it, clearance damaged piece with um, some Velcro. That way I can remove the rain gauge and fill it with water and some fresh flowers, arrange them real pretty before placing them back up onto the wall hanging. But for my chalkboard with the quote, I'm going to just go ahead and E6000 that right onto the surface. But then I realized I really didn't like that there was a lot of space there up at the top, so I wanted to add a little filler. And so I pulled out one of my favorite accents, these little stickers from the Dollar Tree. They come in all different colors, and if you don't like those colors, just paint them, which is what I did here. I'm going to just paint them with some white chalk paint. I did uh, just the one row on each of the stickers. And then I will let this first coat dry, and then I will go back with a second coat of the paint. And you want to do make sure that you're getting kind of all around the sides and in between each of the little stickers individually so you get nice coverage. And here is the finished project complete with the little white dot stickers and you can see here some nice peony flowers in the vase. You can do this of course with artificial flowers but if you do have a lot of flowering bushes in your yard and you do like to have fresh cuttings this makes a great option to display those. And you just can't beat flowers in a rain gauge as an illustration for that saying. For the next DIY, I will be using three of the Dollar Tree hula hoops. Now they do come in three different sizes. I got two of the small and one of the medium. And then I'm also going to be using some wired garland from my stash and some green spray paint. So first I just spray painted the three hula hoops with this Eden green spray paint. And then I took this green leaf wired garland that I originally purchased from Hobby Lobby and I just attached it to the hula hoop and just began twisting it around the hula hoop. And as I went around, I just made sure that the garland was being evenly spaced all the way around, just kind of went back and repositioned it if it got a little, you know, sparse in some spots or too full in another spot. And then I just continued that until I got to the other end of the garland. Now, another option here would be to wrap this as well with some fairy lights, and I have done that in other projects. But um, for this one, where I'm going to be hanging it, it already has some hanging lights, so I won't be adding any here, but it does make a great addition. And here you see the finished project. Here's all three hoops, and you can see behind it is one of those curtain lights, so that's why I didn't add the lights to the hoops themselves. And you can see where this takes up a great big piece of the wall. So if you have a big span of space that you need to have some type of decoration on, this makes a great option. For the next project, I'll need four of the Dollar Tree hanging planters and two of the Dollar Tree puck lights. And then the first thing I'm going to do is paint the white parts of my puck lights with some black paint. Next, I'm going to take one of my hanging planters and place it inside another one of the hanging planters. And then I'm going to line them up so that they are not even. And then I'm going to zip tie them from there. And I'll just put a few of the zip ties all around. And um, what I'm trying to do is create, by putting the two together, I'm creating a more substantial, weightier piece. And uh, adding the spokes, adding some additional weight to it will make it look like a more upscale item than a couple of Dollar Tree planners zip tied together. Now you may be wondering why am I doing so many outdoor pieces? First it was the three videos on planters and now we have this outdoor decor video. Well as you may have guessed I am doing a complete outdoor space makeover and I should be publishing those makeovers shortly. Then once all the zip ties were attached I just went back with some scissors and cut off the tails and then I just twisted the little nubby parts down and in. Next, I took some E6000 glue and attached it to the bottom of my puck light. And then I just attached that to the bottom of the basket. And I did that for both basket sets. And then I took the chain hanger and I attached it to the spokes of one of the baskets. Then I again used some zip ties to attach the two sides. Now, you do have to still get inside of the uh, light fixture to change the batteries on the puck lights. So those zip ties will need to be cut. I was going to use some wire, but I figured it was just as easy to just cut and replace the zip ties as to unwind the wire. And then as you can see, you can easily still get inside the spokes to turn on the puck lights just by pressing down on that center part. 
And here's the finished project hanging up. And you would be surprised how much light this little baby gives off between those two puck lights. It's quite illuminating. I'd show you more, but I don't want to give too much of that makeover reveal away, but you will see more in that makeover video. This next project is more of an update than a from scratch DIY. If you saw the DIY planters number two video, you might remember this black planter basket that was a high-end dupe made with Dollar Tree items including Dollar Tree shovel handles, a Dollar Tree organizer, and a Dollar Tree basket, and then just some black spray paint. The items were painted and assembled, and I will link that video here for the full instructions. But basically, a base was constructed with the organizer box and the shovel handles, and then the basket was glued on top. Also in that video, I suggested using charger plates or pizza pans on top of the base instead of the basket to create small tables. Here it is with a pizza pan painted black. And here is the faux wood charger from the Dollar Tree. And here is a real wood charger from Target. But what I discovered since filming that video was that it's actually better to combine them both. So here is the basket planter with a charger on top, creating a nice tabletop above the basket. What's great about this is that it does create a taller table where needed. But better yet, it creates a space for you to store items like books or sunscreen or hobbies you might be working on in your outdoor space. Then just put your charger plate back on and you have a wonderful tabletop for beverages, flowers, and small candle. As an added bonus, you can also use the charger plate as a serving tray. And here is a peek at some of the other combinations. Here it is again with the Dollar Tree faux wood plate. And now this is another faux wood plate. This one is from Michael's. I think this one was about $1.99. And here it is again with the Dollar Tree pizza pan that has been painted black. And this makes a real nice unit because it does all match and comes together really nicely. And again, you can get complete uh, construction instructions in the Planters 2 video, which I will link in the description box. But my favorite topper is definitely the real wood charger from Target. It makes such a pretty and functional piece and truly can be used both outdoors and in. Well, I hope you have enjoyed these modern farmhouse outdoor decor DIYs. And don't forget to be on the lookout to see how these all get pulled together in the makeover reveals coming out shortly. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to give a thumbs up and please share with any family and friends you think would also enjoy this video. If you plan on making any of these, have a favorite or have a question, please leave me a comment below and if you're not already a subscriber and you like what you see, please consider subscribing. We'd love to have you join the family. And don't forget to check out Holly at Hot Humble Pie. I have provided a link to her video in the description box below, and you can go there and check out some more great farmhouse outdoor decor DIYs. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on FabTax, where we're putting the extra and ordinary one DIY at a time.